is 1230. So you know what time it is. It's Wyatt Wednesdays with Shepard Offensive Lyman Wyatt Pelicano. And you've returned to the SU Rams FB football Instagram I saw this morning, Wyatt. Yes, sir. We are back and in a big way. Let me tell you, everybody's excited why Wednesdays is back. Uh, I mean, what a, what a great day to be alive. What a great day to be alive. Uh, the Rams survive on Saturday. Unfortunately for you, I think I saw you the whole time on the sideline. Didn't Maybe got in for one snap, but uh, are you back healthy this week? Uh, yeah, we're definitely working back. Um, I'm at the point now where I'm, I'm moving around and stuff, so... Uh, pretty much my my situation is entirely in Coach McCook's hands. Um, I'm letting him decide how he wants to go about it. Um, so that's pretty much where we're at. I'm letting him make, make the decisions on what he wants to do with me and, and how he wants to go about it. So that that's, that's where we are. But I feel great. Uh, I'm moving around very well. Uh, I'm at the point where I'm practicing, taking normal reps again. I didn't go in on Saturday. Uh, but like I said, it's all all in his hands at this point. Why at any time there's a competition at quarterback, and, and in this situation there was a transfer coming in, uh, and Seth kind of had to, I guess, win over you guys in the locker room, I would presume, because some guys would probably be kind of loyal to the other guys because they've seen them play before. How big do you think that drive was uh, to win the game for Seth and, and for the locker room? Because now everybody knows he can do that in the big moments. Yeah, I think uh, I think – it's funny you say that. I feel like we've always we, we've been behind them. You know, I, I think we're we're one thing that we do with Shepard, which is great, is we have our next man up mentality. I think it stretches a little bit beyond just next man up. You know, like even when I got hurt, like I'm, I was Kurt's biggest fan on the sideline. I wanted him to do great, and I think Leck is the same way. You know, like well, we we want team success. That's what we're all here for. Uh, so. I don't think Seth had as much of a gap there as, as maybe it might appear from the outside. I feel like a lot of us already had a lot of faith. But, I mean, he definitely got the job done. He put the ball, like the plays that he needed to make, he made them. Uh, I think he played a good game. Obviously, there's always stuff to fix. Everybody can be better. Uh, and that includes myself and everything we do. So that that's just part of the game of football. But I think I think that was the play. We all knew he could make that play. He made it. It was the right play to make. So, I mean, good on him. But as far as the trust in the locker room, I feel like it's already been there. And I and and if he was to if the coaching staff was to decide to go a different way and put uh, Leck in the game, we would have we would all support him too. You know, so it, it goes down the line. If we all have trust in each other because without trust, there's really nothing at all. But yeah, I I think that that definitely maybe for the fans, I think it helped them. Maybe he won, won them over a little bit. But as far as the locker room goes, he he already had our trust. Why well, there are a few key guys out, whether it be to injuries or numerous other situations going on within the school with academic eligibility, this and that. So we really got to see some young guys step up on Saturday to really help Shepard get that win. Just talk about the depth and how much fun it was to see those young guys step up. Yeah, well, I mean, like I just said, you know, the next man up mentality and Shepard, it stretches beyond that. Um, all those dudes that are fighting those problems are we're all extremely supportive of the dudes behind them, and that's how it should be, you know, because the last thing we need is to have people pulling in different directions. But when all 100 of us are pulling in the same direction, there, there's not a lot of teams that can stop us. And watching those young dudes get the chance that they had, I mean, like in their certain situations where it, it's super beneficial, right? Like look at Miles Greer. Really bad. That dude, that would have probably been Rodney Dorsey back there. So we wouldn't have seen what he could do. And not that Rodney maybe couldn't have done the same thing, but still it gave him an opportunity to shine, and that's awesome. You know, so that, I think he's a prime example, but there's, they're all over the field. You know, we got to see a lot of dudes that maybe wouldn't have been out there, out there, and I think that that's awesome. And I, they, they did a good job. I think all the dudes that had to step up stepped up, and that's always good to see. And like you said, depth. Depth is everything. One thing we are in Shepherds now, it is deep. So, I mean, it's always fun to see the young guys succeed. Wyatt, to kind of follow up on that, when do you know a freshman can make an impact right away? Like, how long does it take for you to, as a player, to be like, that guy can help us out right now? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it varies on position. I would say one of the hardest positions to do that at is offensive line because the strength and maturity gap 
and and the speed of which we're playing is different. Um, so it, it's it's a lot. Like there's there's not a lot of freshmen coming in. Like as a freshman, I wouldn't have wanted to play. I wouldn't have wanted. I would not have put myself in. I would never put myself over anybody that was playing. Um, but. That said, I, I feel like it, at the skills positions, you know, like we, we got to see Cordell go out there and do his thing, and, and that was a really, really fun to watch. And that dude, I think we, we knew from the start that guy could play football. You know, like an athlete is an athlete when you get on the outside of the box. You know, like a, 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 the numbers don't lie. You know, Cordell is fast. He's twitched up. Dude can move. He's got great routes. He's got a good knowledge of the game. He knows when to sit. He knows when to stretch. He, he's, he's a smart kid, you know, so – he got the he got this fan and that's just the one that's coming to my head, but there's so many more. Uh but he's he's like a good example to me of seeing a kid and you're like, Becky can play ball. And we have some of those dudes. But it, it is an interesting thing, but it varies position to position because I think speed is speed, but strength isn't always strength. There's a difference in field strength and just like weight room strength. So it's a little bit more difficult to see in the lineman, but I mean you can't hide you can't hide speed. And I mean Ryan Beach is a prime example of that too back in the day. So it's just one of those things where it's like you know when you see it kind of deal. And uh, Joey, or I mean, not I was going to mention Joey, but uh, you, Wyatt, when you, uh, we looked down on the sideline, you were hanging out with Joey and with Tyson. What was that like, kind of just sitting there with them? Obviously, you knew the odds of you getting in the game were, you know, kind of if somebody, you had to get in the game, you are going to get in the game, but you were hanging out with them on the sideline. Were they kind of telling you anything they learned at the next level? Um, well, I got, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm still super close with all those dudes, you know, Brian Walker, Tyson Bajan, Joey, all those guys, Ronnie too. So, I mean, I've been keeping up. So as far as like the big lessons they've learned have already kind of been shared, uh, but like the, the snap to snap lessons, right. I mean, they, like there were times where like Brian especially would just be like, like a bad drive happens he would come up to me and be like, you got to make sure these dudes are calm before they even hit the bench. And that is true because sometimes we don't have that and we don't have a, um, a on-staff offensive line coach to to play that role. And that's a lot of weight for Coach McCook to bear. So I think I talked about it in the first segment we did where it's like me, Ty, James, we try to try to carry some of that burden for him, you know, and, and keep, it, keep it so he – keep the minimal amount on his plate that we can, you know, and, and that's part of it. And so they were giving me a lot of leadership advice, um, stuff like that. It's hard for them. I mean, Joey, maybe if I had sat down and got to talk X's and O's with him, he could teach me a thing or two. I'm sure he could. But uh, it wasn't that kind of time. We were we were locked in on what was going on on the field. So everything that we were talking about had to do with the game we were watching. And, I, yeah, obviously I was ready to go in and at the drop of a pen. You mentioned before, Wyatt, how you obviously have confidence in everybody on the team. And uh, the guy filling in for you, you've mentioned before that you have confidence in Curtis Jefferson. Uh, How do you think he played? And was there anything that you maybe told him throughout the game uh, to try to help him out since this was one of his first, you know, real moments out there on the field? Yeah, I mean, Curtis is a banger. You know, there's no other way to say it. That kid, kid, he hits hard. There's definitely, he's got some solid clips. Of uh, like in pass protection, snapping back on a nose, he got caught a nice pancake there. Um, I thought he played a good game. You know, he held it down. He did his job, and that's really that's that's all you all you can ask for, right? When you get the opportunity to step up like that, I mean, you want you want a dude that can get the job done, and I think he did that. So I thought he I thought he did a good job. As far as any coaching that I I gave him, I don't really think I gave him a lot. For me, uh, for me, it's more of a I'm more of a motivator. Um, I definitely coach up the young guys technique-wise, but as far as the older dudes, I mean, Kurt's been here just as long as I have. So there's really not a whole lot I can say that he hasn't already heard. Like uh, the the dudes like me, him, Ty Lucas, James Bell, we're, we're at the point now where we can kind of self-analyze like when we watch tape. Like we can almost see what we do wrong before Coach McCook does. You know, so as far as mistakes like that, I might mention like, hey, this. And then he'll he'll beat me to the punch. Be like, yep, I already know. And that's and that's how it should be, you know, because we are our biggest critics, and that's the way it should be. But I, I thought he played a good game, um, and he does just like the rest of us. He's doing a great, does a great job of uh, criticizing himself and analyzing his own tape and, and own uh, plays on the field. So wasn't a whole lot of uh, technique coaching going on between me and Kurt. Just 
you know, a lot of keeping those dudes in it, keeping the heads up, spirits high, because obviously that was a tight one. We were down for a good bit. So got to make sure everybody's locked in, nobody's rolling over, and we're, we're uh, putting everything we got out there, which I think I think they did. I think Kirk did. So hats off to them. Wyatt, uh, talk a little bit about that final drive and then ultimately captivated by Dustin Fisher's first career catch and it being the game-winning touchdown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was that was a big moment for Tank. You know, and uh, Tank is Dustin Fisher for people that don't know. <clears throat> for people that don't know. Sorry, my voice is a little strained. Um, but, yeah, that was – I mean, that's an electric drive, right? That's one of those things uh, – one of those fairy tale drives was we we in Shepherdstown are known to put together. Sometimes I wish we didn't keep it as close, but I mean, no regrets, right? Because it sets up a big moment, and uh, and like you guys said, it sets up a big moment for not just Tank but Seth too. And, and I mean, what what a way to execute, right? I mean, get the get the old man the ball in the end zone. Let him let him let him have some fun. He's been working his butt off blocking for. God knows how many years. So uh, I think we were all happy to see him in the box. Wyatt, this kind of ties into that. You kind of just mentioned the close game, something that Shepard fans have definitely become used to, last-minute drives, miracle drives, big wins. However, you haven't really seen it week one, a team in Southern Connecticut State that Shepard blew out last year, definitely a better team this year, obviously, in a close game, and things have changed. But for the fans that maybe – have some doubt in this team now because of the way things went on Saturday, even though it was a win. I'm going to give you some time because I know you're always optimistic about this program and can always pet people up and erase the doubt in the minds of those that might have it. Yeah, I mean, well, week one is always uh, – like the jump from week one to week two is – it is uh, like our, our OC even, Coach Clark mentioned it in, the, uh, in our meeting room post game, you know, on Sunday when we got back to me, where week one is really uh, – it's the make or make or break jump uh, for a lot of people, like in a lot of people's opinions. Not so much mine. I think you can get as much done productively from week one to week two as you can any week. I think you can. It's the same amount of days. There's no reason you should be able to get just as good. Like you should, they were saying that we should progress just as much between or more from week one to week two than we should any other week. I think we should progress as much as we can every week. But that said, I agree. There's there's Sorry, my alarm and stuff. Um, I think that there's a, always a great opportunity for us to get better. Um, but I, I have so much confidence in this team. And I think that game, when we looked at the tape, there's mental errors you got to clean up. It's the first time for a lot of those dudes. And we had a lot of young dudes who were unexperienced out there. So giving them the time to actually analyze these mistakes, now that they see it at game speed, see it whenever, when the bullets are really flying and there's some skin in the game. Um, so I, I think that we're going to see some drastic improvements this week. And I think we'll see even more the week after that and more the week after that and so on. So this team is only going to get better. You know, repetition is the mother of all learning, and there's no repetitions like game reps. So I think the the sky is the limit for this team. So we're only going to get better. And anybody that thinks that it's not the same, I'm telling you it is. The culture is the same. We are showing up to work every day and working just as hard as we were last year, if not harder. So uh, the improvements from last week to this week are going to be crazy and so on down the line. Every week we're going to be a better team. And by the end of this thing, Shepherd football is going to be what it's supposed to be, which is a Final Four national championship caliber team. We'll get you out of here on this one, Wyatt. Uh, you take on Edinburgh uh, near uh, Great Lakes up there. They had an interesting test week one. They took on a D1 FCS team in Duquesne. Have you guys ever been able to watch that film? And kind of how do you grade a team off of facing a Division One team? Yeah, so we, that's, uh, we do have cut-ups from the game. Um, we've been watching them. Honestly, I, this is just how I feel. I, I don't see a huge difference. And play from a lot of those, uh, a lot of those FCS and, and what we do, you know. So um, Duquesne's a great program. Uh, I mean, but we were respecting Edinburgh regardless because you got to respect everybody you play. Can't walk into a game thinking, oh, well, we did this to them last year, so that's what we'll do this year. You know, that, that's a bad way to look at it. It's a different team, it's a different program. They played a great game against Duquesne. Um, they are bringing some stuff to the table that we're definitely going to have to work out and figure out. They got they got a lot of different weird fronts uh, defensively up front for us. So we got to make sure we're logged in and figuring out where everything's supposed to go there. 
Um, they're they're a high caliber football team. Edinburgh It's not going to be an easy week. There are no easy weeks in the PSAC, and now we're there. It's the crossover games, so every week is a big week for us now. And I, I think that this is just another one of those games.